All right. Conversions example one. We're going to answer this question, and in so doing, we will develop a formula for when infinite series of the form 1 over n to the p, where p is constant, when they converge, when they diverge. So we're asking the question for what values of p, and remember p is a con so p will be a constant here, for what values of the constant p does this thing converge, diverge? Uh, naturally, like we've done uh, many times before, we will use the, in the improper integral to determine convergence or divergence. Remember, if this converges, this converges. If this diverges, this diverges. So we'll determine what values of p make this thing converge. That'll tell us what values of p here. We'll determine what values of p make this thing diverge. That'll tell us what values of p make this diverge. All right, so remember, uh, We'll look at the proper integral Remember for antiderivatives, uh, uh, the, the uh, power rule, when you have x raised to a power, you add 1, divide by that amount. So we have x to the negative p plus 1 negative p plus 1, we're going from 1 to r. Uh, just to look a, uh, look a little nicer, I'll get a, some style points, uh, 1 minus p, uh, negative p plus 1 is 1 minus p. Now evaluating, we have r to the 1 minus p over 1 minus p minus 1 to the 1 minus p over 1 minus p. 1 raised to any power is 1. So there we go. All right, so this is the limit as r approaches infinity of r to the 1 minus p 1 minus p minus 1 over 1 minus p. All right, so first, let's consider the case that p is bigger than 1. If p is bigger than 1, then, okay, let me just rewrite this. Let's put the 1 and the p there. The alligator mouth is going towards the p there, like so. So that tells us that 1 minus p is negative. So in this case, okay, so if p is bigger than 1, right, that says that p is bigger than 1, which tells us subtra uh, subtracting p from both sides. Remember, you only have to flip the sign when you multiply or divide by a negative. So here we added or subtracted. So it's okay, we don't have to flip the sign. We'll get it like that. So 1 minus p is negative. All right, so if p is bigger than 1, this tells us that 1 minus p is negative. Okay, and then the limit, this is a negative number up there, so 
negative, think of uh, if you have r raised to the negative 3, that means bring it downstairs, you have r cubed, right? So this is 1 over r to the p minus 1, 1 minus p minus 1 over 1 minus p. Uh, you may be thinking, how did I get from 1 minus p to p minus 1 there? Let me show you real fast. So we established that if p is bigger than 1, 1 minus p is negative. 1 minus p is negative, so that means take this r downstairs. right? So if you take it downstairs, you've got to make this like that. Distributing that negative through, you get negative 1 plus p, so that's p minus 1. OK, um, so r in the denominator, right? Uh, the limit as r approaches infinity, this will go to 0. And we'll end up getting some number here, negative 1 over 1 minus p. So what we've, what we've established is that p bigger than 1 convergent. All right, now let's look at the case where p is less than 1. If p is less than 1, then 1 minus p is positive. Let's see, subtract p, subtract p, okay. then 1 minus p is positive. So r stays in the same place. So r in the top, as r approaches infinity, that just goes to infinity. So we get infinity divergent. So p less than 1 is divergent. Now let's look at the case one, uh, where p equals 1. When p equals 1, this becomes the integral, the improper integral, 1 over x, dx, which, which we've already established diverges. OK, so less than 1, equal to 1, same result. Let's make that less than or equal to 1 and go like that. So what we've, what we've established is diverges if p is less than or equal to 1, converges if p is bigger than 1. So this tells us that this thing diverges if p is less than or equal to 1, converges if p is bigger than 1. 